So the combination is one, two, three, four, five? That's the stupidest combination I've heard in my life. That's the kind of thing Lou Diamond would have on his luggage. It's time to take an inside look at those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond. Today on Thrive Loud, we have the co-founder and connection specialist at Relationship Running Games. He is the leading man who you need to know about next generation of e-learning. He's got sales skills. He's got a desire to connect men across the globe, other people, and relationships together. He himself has a truly inspiring story about resilience. Thrive Loud listeners, he's all about vulnerability, authenticity, and connection. Emilio Palafox. Emilio, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic. Happy to be here. Thank you for that. I'm excited. I'm excited to be here, one, because I got a chance to be on your amazing program, Relationship Renegades. One day it's going to air. I'll find out when that is one day. At least at yeah. the time we recorded it, it hasn't come out. Rachel, like, I'll oh, let we... Rachel know she's going to give you all those details. <laughs> she's like, oh, we threw that in the can. We don't know if that was going to Uh, but what I will tell you is I got to know you over the last few months, hear your story, hear what you're all about, pretty impressive stuff. And I also recognize the similar journey that you and I actually shared a different aspect of it. So what I wanted to do was let's rewind the clock a little bit here. I don't want to go all the way back to the womb, but I want to go (laughs) to the point where, um, you realized you were kind of unhappy doing what you were doing. And let's, let's, let's hit that part of your life and explain how that led you kind of to where you are today. So fair enough. It's a good start. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so for everyone listening, I was in uh, oil and gas, finance, accounting, consulting for about 10 plus years. I was in Houston, Texas at the time. And um, I just remember whether it was when I was doing more so of the finance or the, I mean, when it, when it came to accounting. I'm not the accounting type, but when people see me on social media now and what we're doing now, like that's who I am, right? I love being in front of the camera. I love talking. I love speaking. I love coaching. And uh, back then I was, you know, in a cubicle starting off um, doing forensic accounting for oil and gas, going back to, you know, 10, 15 years prior. And I remember having stacks and stacks of folders and papers in my desk all around me. And would get there at six in the morning, wouldn't leave until about oof, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 o'clock at night, only to come back and study for like the CFA, chartered financial analyst and work out. And it was just this like hamster wheel of just misery. Right. And it was just one of those things. It was like, that's just what it was. That's all I knew. It was the next step. Um, and I look at those pictures now and I'm like, I, I will actually when I was there, I just remember like, how can I escape this? And, and I didn't know how, cause it was a lucrative job. Um, it, it, I kept climbing up the ladder. It kept getting more lucrative, but I was dying inside. Like every single day wasn't my passion. It wasn't my purpose. And I certainly didn't know like what to do and how to shift. I was always trying to shift within the company never really thought outside of like, I could do something completely different. And if I ever thought that it was, um, obviously very scary, you know, like uncharted waters. And it just, yeah, it was, uh, it it wasn't until I ended up getting fired from a consulting job that really kind of woke me up when, you know, I, um, by the time I got into consulting, I I really had a big head just to be very frank. I I thought I was the shit. I don't know if I can curse on this show, but you know, I thought you absolutely fucking can. So we're all good. (laughs) Yeah. I I, I honestly had a big ego, man. I thought I I thought I had everything and that I was everything. And especially because when I left corporate America to do consulting, it, you know, I had an opportunity to work for the big four in terms of consulting, but then I figured out like, Hey, if I can go independent just by myself, create my own business and just like, you know, I didn't have to give my margin to, you know, the, the big four. I could just take it all myself, right? And, and so I went on that path. And luckily, given my, my network and the way that I networked back then, um, I was able to get into these contracts. 
and make a lot of money. Um, but, and so it, you know, when I got fired, it was kind of a, a hit to my ego at that time. I never gotten fired before, uh, woke me up, shook me up a little bit, but it was kind of like the perfect time because even externally speaking, you know, the right car, the right house, right reputation, I was traveling all over the world. People on the outside were like, Emilio, bro, you are, you're killing it. You're living the dream. Uh, but again, I was dying inside. I, I truly was wearing a lot of masks, you know, because behind the yeah. scenes, you know, I, I was in such toxic relationships, like friendships, intimate relationships. Um, I, I didn't really know who I was and what I really wanted to do. And so I was really lost. And when I got fired, that's kind of when I started to change things up. But uh, I'll leave it there as to like, yeah, the, 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 those are the pain points I remember of like on the outside, it looked, you know, and it's just the typical classic story. Right. And on the inside it was not that. So what was the switch or the, 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 the ignition that went off that basically said, Hey, all right, I got to stop doing this and I got to start doing things that I care more about inside. When, when did that occur? So, you know, <clears throat> that was knocking within me for like 10 years. Well, scratch that. I think in the beginning it was like fun. And I was like, I was really kind of learning and loving what I was doing. It's new territory. So maybe a few couple, a couple years in, I was fine, but like, you know, the last seven, it was really knocking inside of me every day. Um, and, and, and a great analogy, I think that can really exemplify what it was like is there's this story of, of this guy, he's going to visit an old friend of his and, you know, and the friend kind of lives off the grid in this, in the woods. And he, uh, he goes and visits a friend. It's been a few years and, and, and he, you know, he goes and visits him and he, walks up the stairs and they got this kind of like porch patio kind of thing in the front. There's this dog that he has in the corner. The dog's uh, kind of moaning and groaning. And he's like, Hey brother, you know, John, it's been so great to see you. He's like, Hey, is your dog? Okay. He's like moaning, groaning. He's like, yeah, you'll be all right. Come on inside. And they go on inside and uh, they catch up, you know, have some tea and they're just catching up. And uh, after a few hours, you know, they say goodbye and he's walking outside. And as he's walking outside, he continues to hear the dog moaning and groaning. He's like, are, is your dog okay? He's like, no, it's okay, man. He's just sitting on a nail. He's like, why is he doing that? He's like, why doesn't he get off? He's like, because it doesn't hurt as bad. Huh. You know, because it doesn't hurt enough, you know? And it's like, it, the, the nail for me that I was sitting on didn't hurt enough. And I think in life, like, things don't hurt enough. So it's like, we're fine. Like, oh, we can take the pain until it's so unbearable to where like, I can't do this anymore. Like, enough. Like, let's, like, Let's end this. Let's begin whatever it may be. And so the nail I was, I was sitting on that for, you know, seven years and it just continued to hurt more and more and more and more until I think people have two choices in life. It hurts enough to where they finally get off or life events happen that like make them change regardless, yeah. you know, and, and you can call that life, God, source, universe, whatever, but like life will happen. And so I think mine was a combination of the two of yeah. not only coming from within kind of that nail I've been sitting on, but then life event of getting fired. But it was also in a 360 in terms of there was a nail that I was sitting on, you know, within my relationships, right? I was, I was, I was drinking so much, I was doing mm -hmm. drugs, was, um, you know, was, was um, just, oh my God, toxic relationships. When I think about that, it's like, the intimate relationship that I was in was the most toxic and we may or may not get into there, but you know, the friends and the environment that I was in, it just, it wasn't, uh, it was all of darkness. Let's just say, right. It wasn't of the light. It wasn't like a breath of fresh air. It wasn't about freedom and enjoyment and joy and, and peace. And so I think it just came from all of the different angles where I finally said, enough. And I decided to take a year off, go on a sabbatical that turned into two years and then kind of started that, that part of my chapter in those, in that life. But uh, yeah, I think it was just, I think it was all of that. Emilio, did that bring you West further out to California? Yeah. So, well, it first brought me to Austin, Texas. I moved from Houston yeah. to Austin, was there for a couple of years. And then that's when I met Rachel on a business trip. And then after 10 months of long distance, ended up uh, moving to uh, Santa Monica. 
Fravel listeners, if you're familiar, the Rachel that he's referring to has been on this program before, and that's Rachel Brooksmith. And uh, we had a whole superhero-like conversation on Thrive. Yeah. Um, yeah. This time we're, we're, we're doing the male version conversation, but a much more interesting story in this. And this. Yeah. so now you, you, you get out there and, and you have a different way of looking at relationships. You have a different way of thinking about how to have real openness, be vulnerable, be open, be not sitting on the nail. Thank you for that <laughs> analogy. And uh, maybe explain a little bit about what you're doing to keep that going each and every day, because I think the the work that you're doing is definitely different and very much <laughs> after getting to know you a little bit yeah. um, on brand, very yeah. on brand for what you are about. So, and, yeah. and, and maybe you could share that with the listeners so we can understand it. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> but I will say right before I go into that, I think a key thing yeah. to mention here and to note is that you know, it wasn't until like, I've, I've been a self-development junkie since I was sixth grade. Cause I didn't want to become my father at the time. And yeah. after healing those wounds, it was on to the next and on to the next, on to the next. When I got fired and took a sabbatical for a year, which actually ended up being two years. That was when more vulnerability, that's when I found myself even more. So it's this analogy of, uh, and I mentioned it in the story, it's, you know, Tony Robbins talks about this. Like, if you want to take the Island, which is your goals, dreams, and aspirations, he's like, burn your effing boats. Right. And so like the way that when I started that journey, that sabbatical that turned into two years, I had burnt everything in my life, metaphorically speaking, right? Like left friendships, left intimate relationships that I thought I was going to marry, like left the job, left the career that I worked so hard to build, um, you know, really left my reputation, lost my car, my house, my, my everything. Mm. And it was that typical story truly of like jumping from couch to couch to couch, extremely humbling. Uh, life shut me up hard and it was the biggest blessing of my life. Um, and, and so during that came a lot of vulnerability, right? Like, so I, in addition to the books, the conferences, did a lot of deep inner work, a lot of intensives that I went to, uh, started going to men's, um, what's called men's work or shadow work retreats, where in my journey started to kind of shed that onion, right? And and that's where really the vulnerability and finding myself really just started to take place. And, you know, what I mean by that is kind of like, you know, you mentioned what I'm doing now, and this is very kind of a two-way street here. So one of the key phrases of what we do at Relationship Renegades is kill your Superman to find your Wonder Woman. Right. And you can replace Wonder Woman with anything, peace, love, joy, happiness, abundance, and it's this Superman that is the ego. It's, it's it can be also synonymous with uh, walls that we create, characters that we play, masks that we wear, right? And and people may or may not know that they're wearing that, right? Like all of our lives, even now, when something happens to us where we don't feel safe, seen, heard, or loved, and and that's what we want ultimately. We will put on a mask. We will put on a wall. We'll become a character that is strong, so we don't get hurt anymore. We'll become a peacemaker, so that everyone's okay. Well, whatever character we decide to play, we start adding on more and more and more and more and more. So, by the time I got fired, by the time I started to take this journey, burn my boat, swim to my island, it was like it was the journey of removing all the masks. It was a journey of removing all the walls. Now, it's not like I like knew that and then I wanted to do that. It was kind of in retrospect, right? So when I'm like in men's circles and, you know, we're doing certain processes and the end result being like, I'm crying and I'm bawling and I'm like, I need help. And I'm just, that's just coming out of me because I've, I've always done things myself and I've never had any help. And to see these men kind of gather like in this snake-like kind of circle around me, all looking at me, me being vulnerable, sharing these things that I want, that I need, that I need help in front of other men from all different races, all different sexes, all different ages, all around the world. It's a vulnerable place to be, but, the, but then people see you in that moment and really see who you are. And it's this vulnerable place that then after that becomes so powerful and, and, and there's some liberty in that. And, um, you know, and so I mentioned those, those details because there's a lot of them, but it was in that journey that I started to get this vulnerability that you're talking about. It was in that journey that I started to really find out who I was because once you start to remove all that, 
what you find is actually the true Superman, who you always were. You know, and so and so I wanted to kind of share that that I it's not that I had that all of a sudden, right? I had to to really find that by by unbecoming everything. And um, yeah, and so and so very much what we do now, what what I do now is is very much that in a sense, right? It's a lot of things, but it's it's helping people unbecome, helping them to remove those masks to find out who they really are and to finally live a life like full of life because people are wearing masks and they're going through the motions. And it's, it's really sad to see, especially now uh, with not a lot of connection and community and we need that. So it's just some of the things that fire me up these days. First of all, thanks for sharing all that. And Emilio, it's really interesting. I, I, I want to equate this to something that you were saying that just kept echoing in my head. And there's the, the entrepreneur, in today's world. And by the way, don't, don't kid yourself. And you, you are one of those, you experienced it obviously in the consulting component and you're doing it in this very in innovative way of helping people in the relationships in this program you've created. Um, but the entrepreneur, I always joke about it. If I were to draw an analogy, when I worked for a big uh, investment bank, when I went into a meeting, it was like, I was wearing a full set of body armor. I had an entire yep. army on my right, on my left. There was a big battleship in, in the Gulf, ready to shoot a missile when needed. And there was air cover, should I need it, whatever the case would may be. Yeah. And, and then when I became an entrepreneur, it was basically me with a loincloth and a stick. And I, you know, and you, the, the amount that you can be exposed yeah. in, a, in a sales meeting, in a business meeting, you know, every up, every down you feel, I will let you know that you're right everyone needs to have gone through this type of journey at some point or another, because it is that um, unbecoming. It is that breakdown of that, the shields and the costumes and the masks that you're wearing that will unearth the real superpower in you, you know, how strong you are. So someone once told me uh, it was a good story about how come you're not wearing any armor or helmet. It was some movie. And the guy yeah. goes, how am I ever going to get stronger if I don't feel the pain? situation mm. right i love, that. I love Move, that moving moving through that pain into what you're doing now <coughs> aside from the fact that you're one damn good looking dude mind you he's a very good looking gentleman i i would argue you probably com comparing yourself from that person that was dying inside that was sitting on the nail to what you are today how healthy how happy how empowered do you feel today oh man I, I, I'm, I'm so, I, the way I see the world right now is completely night and day. I feel like that is completely my past life. You know, people, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, when you haven't seen someone in a long time, you're like, man, like they're glowing. They're just like, you know, like, wow, you look really good. Not in an aesthetic. It's like this energetic presence. Like, wow, what did you do? Right. It's, it's not always that internal work, right? People concentrate on building their external worlds all the time. And they never concentrate on building the internal worlds. Yeah. And when you build that internal world and are comfortable with the thoughts, feelings, emotions that you have on a, you know, every second of the day, because I certainly didn't, <laughs> it took me a long time to get there. But it's like when you do that, that emanates out. And you really, especially nowadays where there's a lot of like, man, there's a lot of depression, PTSD, anxiety about everything that's happening in the world. And it's almost like that eye of the storm. You know, like you become the eye of the storm, which is the most peaceful, calm area. And you always have that. And so I think, uh, you know, I'm the person, I'm the weirdo who's like, can, like, I, I'll tell you right now, Lou, like one of my favorite things, and I'm not kidding, ask Rachel, like the way that the, I'm the most happiest when I'm just like outside. I was doing it this morning. I do that every morning, part of my morning routines. I hear the birds chirping, the winds, the, the trees moving you know, kind of dancing in the wind, the sun's glistening on the water, like those little things, those subtle things are like, like magical to me. And it's because I really like see past the external. It's just like this, you really see what life is about. Like when you think about a seed that has everything it needs to become this humongous tree, this redwood tree, let's say, like that's fascinating to me when you really think about it. And if the tree has that seed, we too have a seed within us. And if we get out of our way, right? Like we have this code in us that's going to become this 
unbelievably incredible, beautiful thing that can like enjoy this life. But then we get in our heads and don't do it. But like we have that seat. And so, you know, that's a long answer to your question. But yeah, I feel I feel full alive, fully alive. And I want that so much for people. I, so if you were to when you've broken this down and threw off the armor, threw off the masks and what'd you say? Uh, kill your Superman to yeah. find your Wonder Woman. Yeah. Uh, but when you found your superpower. Yeah. Amelia, Amelia, share with the listeners what that superpower is. Oh, so I want to I want to share real quickly how. How I, I finally felt that superpower and then maybe what that is or yeah. what it is. Um, and I'll cut to the punchline in reverse engineer. It's in the surrender. It's, it's in the letting go and letting God or source or universe or intention or unified feel, right? There's all these words, whatever you want to say. Like, I think if people are trying to do it all by themselves and continue to wear the armor and have all this kind of stuff, like you're going to get so far, but what got you here won't get you there. Yeah. And for me, and I can only speak for myself always, it was at the end of that two-year journey, I was the last couch I was sitting at was um, sleeping on was my sister's couch in Austin, Texas. Couldn't sleep around like past midnight. I just kind of walked outside, started to take a walk. There was so much going on in my mind. I don't know to this day what park I ended up landing at. I even go back and I'm like, what park was I at? Because I ended up finding myself at this park. And I laid down. I was the only one there, right? It's like maybe like 1.30 in the morning at this time. And, <coughs> and I laid down in the stars and it's just like, I had been releasing so much in that two year journey and going through so much. And like, I had already removed so many masks and so many walls. And I was kind of so bare, like you said, with the loincloth and the stick at that point, really naked at that point. I didn't even have a loincloth at the time. <laughs> and like, I, I, I laid down and was staring at the stars and just started to like pour and like scream and shout, like middle of everywhere. And I was like yelling again, like, I need help. I can't do this anymore. Like completely broken, completely at my most rock bottom. And I remember immediately after releasing that, my body started, and it sounds crazy, but this happened, man. It was the most visceral experience. My body started shaking and I felt this release, like complete release out of me. I like felt my cells shake. It was the weirdest thing and electricity kind of going through my body. It was like kind of like lightning, but coming from within me outward. And it was just this release that right after everything was silent, I felt like I was in the clouds or like in space or something. It was the most peaceful that I've ever been. And I remember just sitting there for a little bit, really peaceful, really kind of just at ease. And I remember getting up and walking back to my sister's house and just feeling like so connected is, would be the word. And then I went to sleep, woke up and, like immediately phone calls, business opportunities, friendships that started coming into my life. Like the, the, the felt sense of connection to myself, others, the world around me to God, source universe. Like I started to feel very powerful. Like in the mm -hmm. nothingness, I found everything or felt everything. And, and so from that on, I started to kind of find out who I really was and really maximize those things. So I think for me, my, I feel like my, my connection, my genuineness, my sincere desire and care for people. Um, I want to say the word non-judgmental, but we as humans judge all the time. It's more of as soon as something comes up in my head of judging myself or others, it's like I have this amazing thing of like constantly removing it because I've seen so much disgust and suffering in my life with so many different individuals. But I, it's almost like the superpower also is within that meaning like anytime someone does wrong to me or to anybody else, there's something that I say and it's, and it's this simple phrase internally. It's just like me yeah. because I've probably done that before or am doing it or maybe will do it. And it's just seeing myself and everybody else. So when something does, I'm like, just like me. So there's no judgment there. So I think when I'm able to create a space where I'm present, not judgmental, really caring and really sincere and really genuine. That's been able to hold space for people to allow them to feel safe, seen, heard, and loved to then say, okay, I'm ready to break down. Like, I know that you have me in this container and they feel safe enough to like 
let it all out. And then they start breaking down their walls and then find the <laughs> real Superman. I love it. it you, you just kind of, I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll use the, something that I refer to as the connecting core, which is that, you know, your, your superpower, your authenticness, your fearless mindset, and the embracing the power of empathy to just understand the world around you. That is what you got, my friend. And that is, um, and that's when you get down to the core, that's what we got. Right. And at the end of the day, from there, sure. like you said, it's <laughs> got this vision of like you standing in a park in Austin with lightning coming out. Of you or whatever. <laughs> <I> know, <right>? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Oh my God, he's, he, he's flash yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or some kind of electrical power or something. But, yeah. but, but I get it because we do have an energy within us that there's so many things that are layered on top of us. And from the challenges you overcame as, as a, as a, you know, a, a young kid and, and, things that you've seen that the work pressures the mm. you know the the shells that you built on top of it and you broke all through all that and and now you're helping others do that i wanted to ask the question what does it feel like when you're able to help others achieve that same type of level of connection that uh, you have it's the greatest it's the greatest feeling in the world and um it's it's it's, it's a felt you know i don't know these days who I keep mentioning this. And I didn't know I was going to be talking about this, but like God source universe is just a higher power, something else driving the bus. And I think when people find their purpose in passion life, there is a higher force driving the bus. So I'm referring to that everybody. And so when you feel connected to that essence, if you will, it's like this overwhelming sense of like love, peace, joy that cannot be described. Yeah. And when I feel someone whether it's someone going through the ringer right now, like if they're in the storm, whether they're in the storm, like in the middle of getting out of the storm or have gotten out of the storm, I always in each of those situations feel that connectedness to God, that source, that whatever, like that overwhelming love. I, I feel it. And sometimes with my clients, it's very much at first kind of like they think I'm a wacko because they're like, I'm going through a lot of shit, but I'm so excited for them because I'm like, yeah, you're fucking doing it right now. Like, this is it. Like, cause I'm excited. Cause I know the alchemy that's about to yeah. transpire. And so it gives me, it is one of it's, it's what I live for. Like, I honestly don't care. Like this sounds kind of weird. I care obviously about a lot of stuff, my family, Rachel, everything, but like the one thing is to like, feel that connection always like, don't care about the money. Don't care about the house. Don't care about the thing. Like, I'll get that. It's just material, whatever. But like, that is what brings me the greatest joy in my life. Yeah. Powerful stuff. Um, I love asking people exactly in the role that you're in right now, helping others um, achieve this great connection and helping them improve their lives and do stuff yeah. to that point. I love asking them this question that, look, you, you've, You've come through the storm. You've got some clarity on where you're going in your direction. You've seen the ups and downs. You understand the benefit of being a renegade. Yeah. Um, but we, all have, we all have days when we're not quite feeling so good. We're a little off our game. We're not quite um, thriving yeah. on those days when you're having trouble doing so. Yeah. What practice do you seek or what individual do you seek out to get yourself back on the thriving track? Yeah, I love that. And I want to kind of say this in a two part way, because <clears throat> I, I don't want to give the impression that like, hey, I, I did all this stuff and I'm, in, I'm, I'm enlightened. I got it all together. Now I'm going to help people. Right. Like, like I'm just like everybody else to where it's like uh, I may find another wall that I didn't know that I had or a mask that I'm wearing or an old mask or old wall says, hey, put me on again. And and sometimes I can. And I'm like, what am I doing? Right. Like those old things coming in and I'm, I'm faster and faster uh, and quicker to, to push that aside and to choose differently, which you mentioned renegade renegade is to choose differently to, you know, to, to finally, you know, change the tide there. And so, so I want to kind of make that, that, that distinction or that clarity there. Um, and so when I'm off my game uh, or when I get to a new level, which has a lot more, stress challenges and adversity because i don't think things get easier right they get harder we just get we get more tools we get more um yeah. you know all that and so for me it's a lot man so there's a lot in my toolbox um what i've been practicing is just kind of my intuition to know which tool i should grab within the toolbox 
Um, right now in this chapter, because it's different in every chapter, some of my go-tos are, I guess I could just mention the following because it really depends on the day. Um, we're big into, me and Rachel are big into breath work. Uh, it's called golden air breath work um, or breath work detox. Uh, and it's like 45 minutes of like deep and intense, intense breath work. And, it, and it's like an inhale through the lower belly and inhale through the chest and then a complete release. So it's, and it's all through the mouth. So it's like, right. And, and you're doing that constantly for 45 minutes and hundred percent of the time, 10 times out of 10, myself, anybody we do it with anybody we recommend, there are releases. There's always a felt experience and a result. And when doing that, the number one important thing is that, you know, you're no longer, you know, the number one human impediment, right, is we live in our heads, constant ego centered, I'm not good enough, yep. I don't have enough, or I'm better than that goes away. And you're just in this kind of nothingness, you're focusing on your breath, there's some resistance, and all of a sudden, you get into this state of consciousness, where there's processing going on. And there's releases going on, and there's euphoria going on. Um, and you're starting to choose differently in that moment, after that, etc. So I think breath work is big for us. I love to experiment with the elements of life. Okay. So, um, you know, we have a sauna up here. So heat, cold, we have cold tubs, so cold. But, you know, going out into nature, I think uh, science has now been showcasing all the incredible interconnections and, and, and connectivity between us and nature, which is incredible. But I always, I'll just say this as kind of like a high level because there's so many different things. It's always living like nature. And so what I mean by that is when I think about a bird to me, and I forget who said this, but birds don't fly. They're flown, yeah. right? There's certain trees that in a storm that break and there's certain trees that bend like palm tree or bamboo. So it's like in my life, am I letting go? Am I like, so it's like almost my mantra these days, right? Like I don't fly, I'm flown. Like I let go and I just allow <laughs> things to happen. So whenever I'm trying to control something, I'm on my off game. I'm like, wow, look at me. I'm trying to control something. Wow, look at me. I'm, I have this expectation. And then I have this expectation of A and then B happens, created my own suffering. Oh my God, let me attach myself to this outcome. Doesn't happen, created my own suffering. Oh, I'm trying to control this and it didn't go the right way, created my own suffering. So when I let go, be the bird, be the tree that's just kind of like, bending in the wind being like hey life's saying go this way not like this way right so when i try to emanate nature in that sense flow like water this may sound woo, -woo but it's like when you really embody these types of flow with the world with what how things are happening letting whatever happens be okay that it just is what it is that allows me immediately in the moment to like Oh, well then maybe I'm supposed to go this way. I'm gonna go this way. <laughs> and, and, then, and then I'm kind of like, then I'm just dancing with nature. And, 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 and truly the way that I, I can conclude this is like, it's like life, the world, nature is like living through me in this vessel. And it's incredible. It's like, wow. I'm like, there's this song and dance with this higher essence. And it may sound, woo, but it's like, it's this beautiful way of living when you start to listen and tap into some of those things. Yeah. I like it. Let's do the admin part of the show, Emilio. Yeah. Share with the listeners all the places people can find you, websites, URLs, things coming up. This is the plug section where you get to throw out what you got going on. You got a lot of stuff going on. So share with the listeners that. We'll put it on the show notes, but it always gets more engagement when they hear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, you know, the two main things, everyone is, um, you know, whether it's myself or the love of my life, my fiance, Rachel Brooks Smith, uh, we put on various masterminds and coaching. So if you're ever interested in any of that, uh, you know, you can find us at Relationship Renegades all across social media platforms. Just Google or type in all social media Relationship Renegades. We do a lot on Instagram if you want to kind of see our life behind the scenes. That's Relationship.Renegades. Um, but if you want to just email us directly, RelationshipRenegades at gmail.com. And uh, I myself are going to be putting on in uh, mid-April uh, a kind of a men's. It's going to be only 15 men. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're a motivated man that is like sick and tired of being sick and tired and really want to live a full life, really be connected more so to yourself, find yourself, know who you really are. Remember actually who you are and how powerful you are. Um, I'd be happy to create space for you to, um, 
to really make a shift and a transformation to really like just become the man you've always wanted to become. And so if you're interested in that, just, you know, email me at relationship renegades at gmail.com. And, um, the last thing I'll say is I, um, I recently got me and Rachel are, are helping lead the next generation of e-learning right now. And so we've partnered up with an incredible company called Avali. They're a part of the Trusum family brand. And for 20 plus years, they create online programs for people, organizations, nonprofits, corporations. So if you or anyone you know are looking to create an online program, they have a science-based, proven, um, behavioral-based system that will not only create your ideal evergreen program, but they make it sticky. And that's their secret sauce. We can go into it, you know, when you, if you're interested and you email me, I can give you some information. But yeah, if you, you know, a lot of people are pivoting right now to create some online programs. So if you need help in that, you want to take it to the next level, I'm happy to help. And you can just email me at the same email that I mentioned. Awesome. A lot more fun than doing that uh, analytical work between the gas and oil industry, right? You know? Oh, man. I don't know how I used <laughs> to do that, man. <laughs> Uh, want to go down Fun Street with me, Emilio? Yeah, let's do it. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Yeah, I got two two guys having a fun time here on Fun Street. So the way this works, here, first of all, share with the listeners. You have more than one. You have two favorite movies that you shared with me. Can you share with the listeners what they are? Yeah, you know when I shared it with you, it's like I got. I feel like I need to figure out some more recent ones that are really awesome. But way back when, when I was in, you know, when I started getting into movies, uh, Fight Club and Vanilla Sky were some of the ones that kind of stuck with me way back when, because we're kind of older movies. Um, so those are the ones that kind of like keep with me, I guess, as I go through life. F Fight Club is spectacular for all the reasons. Um, yeah. This is, I'll give you my Vanilla Sky moment. This is weird. It actually wasn't me. It was a very close friend of mine. Uh, when the shutdown happened exactly a year ago in, in March of 2020, one of my friends uh, is a medical professional and he was going down and everything had been shut down and he was in Times Square. And you remember the scene when Tom Cruise is basically in his dream sequence and everything's all messed up and he's yes. literally in an empty Times Square and there's like nothing there. Yep. He goes, oh my God, I'm having my vanilla sky moment in Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> and, man. I, and I looked at it, I go, holy cow, that's just crazy. So yes, uh, that, and that movie, that both movies make your head blow up a little bit, but. Uh, yeah, I, I love, I love cool. movies that make you really think to have conversations afterwards. And it, you know, it's so funny real quick. I, I, that used to be a movie way back when that like when I was dating women, like we watched it, it was like, oh, wait, wait, you missed a part of this, rewind it. Like you need to hear, you know, <laughs> you need to hear that thing. Or or like <laughs> if they didn't like it, I'm like, I don't know if the one, if she's the one for me kind of thing. Now, it doesn't matter these days, but those two were kind of like ones that I used to gauge. It was hilarious. Yeah, it's awesome stuff. All right, we're going to do the speed round here in Fun Street. You have no idea what's coming your way, but which is good. I actually like this. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a question. I want the first thing that comes to your mind. It's kind of like, think of it like family feud, but I haven't surveyed a hundred people. I'm just going straight. There's here. a lot of family feud bloopers, man. So we'll see here. Oh, yeah. they're the best. Now, these, will be, these will be a little more straightforward. I don't think we'll have too many embarrassing questions here, but what I'm looking for, these are things that lift you up, motivate you, make you feel good. Generally, they make you thrive. Okay? Yeah. A song you love to hear or that pumps you up? Oh, um. Oh my gosh. So the one that just came to my mind, so I got to say it, this is how we do it. I think it's Montel Jordan. This is how song. we do it. Yeah. 90 song. Uh, favorite food that's not a dessert. Favorite food. That's not a dessert. Um, any kind of soup. I, soup is a comfort food for me. We didn't have a lot growing up. So it's like, like we, you know, put everything in there, fill it up with water. So I love soup makes my day. Favorite dessert. Favorite dessert. Um, there's this thing at Irwan Market here in Santa Monica. It's like a raw pumpkin pie. And if I could eat carrot cake again, because I'm allergic to eggs now, I love carrot cake. Okay, that's a good one. I, I, my wife loves carrot cake. She's a big fan. Yeah. An activity you wish you did more of? Oh, surfing. An activity you wish you did less of? Uh, working. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> my, my work's my passion and purpose. Activity I did less of? I would say, mm, it's a great one. Hold on. Dang. Well, I, I think it's just kind of like the analytical and planning of things rather than the execution of our passion. So like okay. all the like analytical and, and administrative stuff. Perfect. If I could snap my fingers, Emilio, and you can go anywhere in the world, 
Where are you? Uh, it would be a room full of men, um, just creating space for them and, and all the different activities, things we do. It would be, you know, the, the laughing, the crying, the yelling, the screaming, the freaking like in, in, in the war, if you will, like in the midst of, of all of that is like almost like my heaven, man. I've gotten this last question I'm about to ask you the perspective from your other half, but I wanted to hear it in your words. What is the significance of a certain dock in Lake Tahoe to you? <laughs> is it Lake what? Tahoe? I think it's Lake Tahoe, right? Oh yeah. The significance, the significance of, of the dock. Yes. As to why I chose that area for the proposal. You've well, done a bunch of things there. There's more like TikTok videos there. There's proposals there. There's like bridesmaid proposals going on there, but obviously it also has some kind of connection to you as well. I would imagine. Yeah. You know, I just want, I wanted to pick a magical place to, I'm all about creating, whether it's in the proposal to make something very special or just in life. Right. Cause like all like as cliche as this is right. Life's just a collection of moments and experiences. And I think, you know, um, I always want to co-create those experiences and moments with friends, right? Like if, if it's at two o'clock in the morning and they're like, yeah, let's go run to the beach and like jump in there. It's like, yeah, that sounds great. But it's like, why not? Why not do that? And then like a year later, be like, man, how fun was it when we did that? Right. Like always trying to find those moments. And so I wanted to find a magical place and environment because environment's key that would, you know, set the stage and create the space for a beautiful magical experience to occur. And that was Tahoe. Her parents are over there. We go there a lot of time for holidays. Uh, the dock is in the backyard. It's this beautiful, magical place. Yeah. The Christmas star was going on at that time. So it was all those kind of components that allowed me to, to propose in such a way that would create that. Um, so it, it was just that. And it was almost like, to be honest, also a plan B because I was originally going to propose in Greece, but borders yeah. were closed and all of that. So it was a very much a plan B situation that ended up being better than expected for sure. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Great stuff, man. The relationship renegade, we, we, we've closed the loop here. We've gotten both of them here on Thrive Loud, both of them unique <laughs> unto themselves, but also Thrive Loud worthy, which I love to say. Emilio, mm. truly a pleasure to have you on the show, man. This was a lot of fun catching up with you. Mm. Thank you so much for having me, brother. You got it, man. And to all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep thriving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Check us out on the web at thriveloud.com and follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook at Thrive Loud. And check us out on the Good Pods app at Thrive Loud, where you can follow, listen, and connect directly to Lou and all of the Thrive Loud episodes. Thanks for listening.